Viewer discretion is advised. Previously on Reality Dog Training. I'm very impressed at your strength. Thank you. Yeah, you I appreciate it. You said you worked out for Moira, but I feel like you might have need to work out more for George. Well, Moira was my workout for George, I think. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What is George the workout for? This season on Reality Dog Training, we've traveled to the last frontier to take on a rescue project like we've never done before. The single worst thing that has ever happened in my dog training career. Just happened. This is Chop, a wild Alaskan dog who grew up wandering the streets of a remote, isolated northern village. Oops. This dog has literally never been inside a house. He's a completely untrained adult dog. He's had very limited interactions with humans. I mean, his teeth are huge and strong. Inertia, my own dog, may never be the same. There's no doubt if she does have a negative experience, it will likely set us back. You know, I think we might have accidentally let a wolf into our house. Chop will force me out of my comfort zone and challenge me as a trainer like never before. Come here. 15 minutes ago, I was ready to quit being a dog trainer forever. So I'm a little discouraged. We were talking about how much we already love him. So it's like, here we go again. Giving a dog that's almost 100 pounds their first bath, it's like washing an SUV. Here. Yes. That's you, what do you think of you? We can't fail this dog. He's really thinking. Good man! There we go. So we're getting somewhere here. Nice. Right, how about that? Starting to understand stuff. Here we are in the final stages of this series. I felt like in that moment, every bit of training I had done with him was meaningless. I would sincerely feel quite guilty if he misses out on a home like this because I didn't prepare him. A nightmare scenario unfolded. This is Reality Dog Training. Subscribe and click the bell. We're on our way to pick up Chop. There's so many unknowns with this dog. He comes from a small village that you actually have to fly to. You can't even drive to this village. He is most likely an insane, crazy mixture. I know myself and I know that it is going to be very hard for me to not want to keep this dog. So we're not keeping this dog. Yeah. Keep in mind, he's been living outside with his rescue family because they're doing everything they can just to buy him some time right now until he finds the right family. This dog has literally never been inside a house. So potty training an adult dog should be interesting. Last time I saw him, he didn't even know how to sit. Doesn't know how to sit. 98% of dogs, you hold up a treat, they go into a sit, you know what I mean? He literally knows none of his basic skills at all. So I think he hasn't had a ton of socialization as a young dog, that's my best guess. Because when I first met him, he was really fearful. Now that might be limited more towards men or it might just be more contextual. I'm really hopeful that we'll connect. But right now we have no relationship. There's no bond between him and I. That's the first thing I've got to establish. He could not care less about me right now. Here. Wow. And I've got to tell you, at this point, as we are driving Chop to our semi-rural place in Alaska, the reality is really setting in about what we're doing right now. Oh, it's the baby. Oh, it's, it's the, the same one. She might attack the car. I'm going to not move because she's watching us. I think that's a coyote. At least it's not a wolf this time. I've never seen so many bears in my life. We basically live in Bear Valley. Whose idea was it again to train a dog in Alaska? I mean, I think we would have been safer training a dog on the plains of Africa.
stop, I really hope you're gonna listen to me, boy. Now, I'm determined to not have anything bad happen to this dog while he's in my custody. Nice looking moose there. So there and there, this is my neighborhood. I love it. I think the first thing I want to do is introduce him to the yard, give him a chance to relieve himself, and then we're going to take him inside. Should be interesting. I'm going to let him walk around here for a sec, and then I'm probably going to take him off leash, but I just want to quadruple check the fence, make sure there's no issues. Good boy. I think I'm going to go ahead and let him off the leash here, let him explore on his own. Just give him a second to have some free time to himself before we go inside. Oh, goodness. All right. Yep, all right, so he's got a problem peeing on the house, I see. I mean, I'd rather he not pee on the house. I don't know if I'm gonna make a training issue of it, but we need to watch that behavior inside. That's what one of my immediate concerns are. Is he gonna do that marking behavior when inside the house? And he certainly doesn't understand that humans don't really appreciate it. Oh, look at that, he backed away there, so I wanna be careful of that. Looks like we could potentially have an aspiring escape artist on our hands here. The rescue sent this to me and showed me a hole that Chop had dug to escape his pen when he was there. I'm not gonna let that happen. You can see him exploring the fence, potentially looking for any weak points that he can dig under. And there are a couple here that I'll probably need to do something about. Plus, I don't intend to leave him out here unattended at all. I never trust a dog in training. I'll introduce him to the house, then I'm probably going to introduce him to Inertia. Hopefully they'll do well together. Inertia is a little intimidated by bigger dogs, so she's actually a little bit more of a concern to me at this point than he is. I think she'll be fine, but I want her to feel comfortable and to open up, so I'll have my fingers crossed there. At this point, I'm even wondering if he wants to be inside. I mean, he's been outside his entire life. Maybe he's more comfortable sleeping outside, but there's no way I could leave him out here because there are way too many bears and moose and danger around every corner. And remember, moose are extremely abundant here, and they are the most dangerous animal to dogs in the state of Alaska. And that might be because they evolved to interact with wolves and defend themselves. And Chop happens to look a lot like a wolf. Maybe a little too much. I think we should go inside, introduce him to the house now. Let's see if he walks right in or what. Yeah, all right, so far so good. I don't know if he's done stairs, so that'll be interesting. Looks like he's figuring them out if he hasn't. Hey, good man. Hi. Let's go. Look at that. He's a little weird, a little awkward on the stairs, isn't he? I'm gonna put this gate closed because as you know, controlling the environment is everything. So hopefully we have kind of control, but you can only do so much to control the environment. For example, if he is a chewer, I mean, you know, he could chew on the couch here, the leg. There's still furniture for him to chew on, so I'm still not gonna just let him have the run of the house. Inertia, that's okay, you'll meet Chop in a minute. Inertia's in the bedroom right now. Wanna give him a second to check things out. I'll be watching him to make sure he doesn't pee and lift that leg. Something that's common with dogs when they're in a new place. And so this is really gonna be the only area that he's gonna be allowed in. But I wanna supervise every move he makes for right now. But I mean, even things like this, I've got these tomatoes out and the citrus over here, like, you know, he could still jump up there. So I could have, yeah, no. So it's not completely dog proof in here, you know, especially when your dog's nose is the same height as the counter. But that's all right, I'm gonna teach him all of that. Again, the first day or two or three is really about getting to know this dog. I'm not gonna have a heavy emphasis on training immediately with him. You can see we've got his crate set up for him, which I'll introduce him to later. I'm just dying to play with this dog, but the problem is he doesn't seem to know how to play yet. We saw that with Moira, we saw that with George. They love toys instantly. When I first met Chop, I did test him to see if he liked to play. He didn't even seem to understand what a toy was or what to do with it. Chop is truly a wild animal. If I'm to have any hope in communicating with him, I've got to show him what it means to be a dog in a human's world. And training a big, strong dog like Chop is not going to be easy unless I can show him how to play start to be intrigued by it. You can see the scent immediately has his attention. These are new toys that actually have scents embedded in them. I'm really hoping that these are going to bridge the gap and make my job easier. 
As your dog chews Playology toys, it continues to release the scent over time. Another thing I was planning on doing with these toys was kind of leaving this one out here. So he has something that he can actually gravitate to that isn't my furniture. Got a soft mouth, see that? Look at that, there he goes. He's interested, he just doesn't know what to do with it. That is so funny. There we go, there's the fire. Good. Yeah, there you go. He's got such a soft mouth. I don't know if we'll keep that, but we'll see. You can see this is not something that's completely instinctive to him. This is the kind of behavior we typically see with really young puppies who are just learning how to play for the first time. So it's so cool to see it with such a big older dog like this. I think one of the reasons we're being really successful with this ball is because of the Encapsa scent technology that they use with Playology toys. I mean, you can see him using his nose and he's really into it here. You can see how well made these are too. I mean, look at that stitching. They actually embed millions of these microscopic scent molecules into the material of every toy they make. For a dog that doesn't love to play, really seems to be working out for him there. So remember, this isn't just any ball, guys. And it's worth its weight in gold right now because it's getting me to build some initial bonding and communication with Chop. We're watching him be very puppy-like and cute with the toy, but there's actually something really substantial happening here. He's learning how to interact with our culture. I'm hoping to be able to use play like this for training. But we're really trying to teach him that people can interact with him. They can teach him things. They don't just bring him food and water and give him love, but they actually can teach too. Ready? Get it. <laughs> what a man. Look at this already. Look at the focus on me over the ball. Yes. Just the fact that he's looking up at me, he's following me more eagerly than he was before. Much more interested. Or did I speak too soon? You're not getting in that refrigerator. And it's also worth mentioning, some dogs are really into harder toys like this while other dogs really like plush toys like this. That's also something you have to really evaluate with every individual dog. Clearly he appreciates the more firm texture. If that's what you can call appreciation, I'd say so. Ready? Go get it. All right, good. And his first real fetch, good man. He's playing tug for the first time here. Look at that, look, he's pulling back, yes. Gonna immediately let him win. Yeah, there it is, good boy, get it. This is a magic moment, so rare is it that you get to catch a dog, especially this age, playing tug for the first time. Good boy, yeah. Let him win. All right, and I'm gonna wait for him to get bored, and then yes, throw it. And look at you, look at you. I'll have a link in the description where you can check out Playology products. And now it's time for Inertia to meet Chop. And I'm a little bit uneasy because he is a really large dog. We need to talk a little bit about Inertia's history because some of you might remember that Inertia had issues with some bigger dogs before. And this is the largest dog that I've had stay with me ever. When Inertia was a puppy, I was very thorough about socializing her with all kinds of dogs, and she played really well with dogs. Her first bigger dog experience was our own dog, Indy, and she loved Tahoe the Rottweiler, too. I mean, they hit it off really well. So early in life, you know, I thought she was doing all right. Because I wanted to be thorough and because she was doing so well, I really wanted to introduce her to the biggest dog I knew, which happened to be Satchmo the Irish Wolfhound. I know Satchmo really well. I know that there was very little risk in terms of him harming Inertia. He's very good with dogs. Nonetheless, Inertia was like, okay, that is a huge animal. I don't even know what that is. It was like she was meeting Big Bird or something. So I took a step back, right, and continued to socialize her with more dogs over time. And things were looking up, and as Inertia was doing really well, you might remember a certain episode where I took Inertia to the dog park. Long story short, she got overwhelmed and a larger dog bumped into her, causing her to have a fear response to that dog. Inertia is somewhat of a sensitive dog. She can play rough, but there are dogs that can play rougher for sure. So she required a certain play style and I wanted to be very delicate so I didn't put her in a situation where she felt like that again. That was a really critical moment for Inertia and I because when your dog has a negative experience like that, as a trainer, you really want to do everything you can to avoid it 
happening in the future to the best of your ability. And that's because the more something continues to get reinforced, the harder it might be for a dog to rebound from. So after that, I continued to take a step back, make sure that I had her play in smaller play groups. And then eventually, Kona, you'll remember, from New Puppy Survival Guide, moved in with us for a few weeks, and that gave her a lot of experience with a puppy that she got to know. Kona was valuable because when Inertia first met Kona, she was tiny, but when Kona and Inertia had a reunion, Kona was giant. That was the most confident I had seen Inertia with a dog that was larger than her, maybe ever. And then Moira, the German Shepherd, moved in with us. Now Moira, Moira is a really high energy dog. I elected to not have Inertia and Moira meet because I didn't want to risk another bad experience for my dog. And that's nothing against Moira. I just didn't feel like Inertia was quite ready for a dog with her more intense play style yet. I mean, the idea here is to make progress and I didn't want to set her back. And then, came along George. And George and Inertia just hit it off amazingly well. Now, George isn't a giant dog by any means, but he's definitely solid, he's definitely strong. He was a rougher player. They just played together really well, endlessly. And over the few weeks that we did have George, he gave Inertia so much confidence. I've never seen her play that comfortably with such a strong dog. So I really think Inertia is ready. I really hope that I'm not wrong because there's no doubt if she does have a negative experience, it will likely set us back. How bad, I don't know, but we've been working for over a year to get to this point. Chop is at least double her size. And don't get me wrong, I mean, Inertia should be able to communicate with another dog and say, hey, you're playing too rough and do that in the way that dogs do. But those corrections should be measured and I wouldn't want it to escalate as they often can if we don't keep our dogs in a situation that they're, they're comfortable with. And I'm hoping to show you how I walk you through the steps that I take with my own dog on this very sensitive issue throughout this series. <laughs> she looks like she's excited to meet him. You can see Inertia has a little pilo erection here where she's a little thrown off. She's cautiously optimistic, which is very much her style, but she looks more enthusiastic than not, which is a good sign. And there's the shake-offs we like to see there. Go. Yeah, like a good girl. Let them smell each other. This is all very nice at first. Unfortunately, Chop is being quite respectful of inertia. So far, I gotta say, this is pretty awesome. Oh, look at this. So. Chop's offering some play behavior, but Inertia's like, don't get too rough here. Throughout this meeting, I'm looking at Inertia. She's not without nervous body language. Her tail gets in between her legs sometimes. She's hunched over. She's not just saying, hey, I wanna play right now. But I know her best and I can tell, or at least I suspect that she's quite curious about playing with Chop. But Chop's size does not appear to go unnoticed by Inertia. Inertia has learned that she can come up to me if she needs separation from a dog. I like that she does that naturally. See that? I won't. Good girl. And I want to let her know that I'm here to protect her as well. She feels safe near me. Good girl. It's worth mentioning that by restraining some dogs in a situation like this, you could risk escalating their undesirable behavior. Being restrained or held back seems to trigger frustration in some dogs. But I feel comfortable here because Chop seems alert, but generally neutral to playful. He doesn't seem like he's over threshold or about to be there. And I've got a history with Inertia. I know her very well, and I feel like she'll be more secure if he's a little bit more stable. And as long as I keep Chop from coming on too strong, Inertia seems to trust me to intervene on her behalf. Good man. Just the fact that he came to me voluntarily, I'm gonna make sure I give him a treat there. Because remember, he backed away from me earlier. It started to rain out here. I think they're cool to kind of get to know each other better while inside. Hopefully they don't get too rambunctious. We'll find out. He's very polite. I like how he's not mounting her or using his paws. I know she really doesn't like that. Let's see if she opens up. She looks like she's thinking about hitting a play bow there. One of them is anyway. Yeah, there she goes. Yeah. <laughs> I knew he, is he fun? Are you playing with Chop? Oh, Chop! What did he do? He lifted his leg, but he didn't pee, but he definitely lifted his leg. So good job on Bree for detecting the potential potty accident. <laughs> She's trying to get him going. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh. Let me take him outside for a quick potty break. 
So I'm going to put inertia up and give both of the dogs some space and quit while we're ahead for now. They seem generally okay so far anyway, but I do suspect there will be more bumps in the road ahead. I'm just really focused with him on getting him comfortable with me. I'm trying to bond with him. It doesn't take anything to do that. He seems to love being pet. See how he's resting his head on my hand right now? I think we're starting to connect a little tiny bit. <laughs> Hope so anyway. You can't force it though. You just have to hang out with them and look at them and pet them and play with them and love them. There we go. So every time I call him, I'm really gonna try and give him something great. He doesn't know come when called, so I'm just whistling right now. Anything that gets his attention, so. Good man, yeah. So that's one thing that I kind of want to start on pretty quickly because Teaching come when called is really important. Just a fun, easy game to play straight away. Okay, see this? So essentially I'm just waiting for him to naturally go through the act of coming back to me to look for a treat here. Is it to say, hey, I want some more treats. Come. Yes. See how he like perked up a little bit? I'm not trying to do too much training with him on the first day. So doing this 30 seconds at a time reinforces, come really well. Now you have to do this a lot. And this is, this is just one way to start. As a dog trainer, I'm always struggling with this when I get a new dog into my life. I just want to train them immediately. And I'm so guilty of trying to jump into training, but really I have to let him adjust. So I'm curious to see how he does in a crate here. We got this crate just for him. The biggest one we could find. I think it's pretty big. Let me see what happens if I just toss that in there. Okay, it doesn't look like he's too familiar with a crate. Here, what's that? There you go. Well, that's pretty good. That's exactly what we want. Just gonna toss a pup for treat in there. Still using freeze-dried beef liver. He's loving those. You can notice how he can stand completely straight up in this crate, which is important. Because even though he's an adult dog, we still have to potty train him. We still have to show him how to behave in a house. That's why having a crate is going to be critical for times when we can't supervise him and overnight. Now, of course, I don't want to be too restrictive with the crate. I don't want him spending too much time in there, but if we introduce it right, it's a pleasant place for him to be. A great way to introduce it right is with really good high quality treats. Good job. Notice I'm not closing the door when he goes in, letting him come and go as he pleases right now. And so I never want to force him into the crate. That is my goal. And I'm gonna have these Pupford treats that I'm using in the description. Let's see what happens here if I close it. I'm looking for any signs of stress from him. Good man, yes. Here you go. I think I'm gonna go ahead and give him a chew along with his dinner to get him really comfortable in there. So far he's doing pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and offer him some food. I have a feeling he's gonna like that. I just wanna look to see how comfortable or uncomfortable he is when I walk near him. Does he get a little on edge if I sit here? He's doing really well. Yeah, I'm not seeing any signs of resource guarding here, but I'm gonna continue to monitor this and uh, take actions that will prevent him from becoming a resource guarder, hopefully. But we'll talk more about that later. I'm gonna give Chop this animal bone here and see if this encourages him to be calm. He doesn't know to not rush out of the crate here. So, I wanna be careful. And check that out. Jeez. Listen to that crunch sound. Man, he's strong. I think we might have accidentally let a wolf into our house. Can't wait to see his DNA results. And so far, I haven't seen any really major obvious signs of anxiety while in the crate, but I am gonna stick around. I'm not just gonna go walk out and leave him alone for hours or anything like that. I really wanna monitor him and make sure I'm doing what I can to have him have a positive association with being in that crate. He's look. Inertia, come. Yeah, so we do see light on some potential resource guarding over the bone there. That is a very natural thing, but that's going to be something for us to focus on there. Shoot, 
She was just starting to get over her fear of big dogs too. I did not want to let this happen. And so now it's my job to do everything in my power to keep this from escalating. From his perspective, he's just trying to protect something he values. He's probably never had a bone like that. He's really excited about it and he doesn't want to share it. And he's grown up on the street with other dogs in all likelihood and that is how they talk to each other. I'd like to have inertia back out here, but I don't want to risk recreating that situation where he feels like he needs to be defensive. And also, I don't know how he's gonna react if I went in there and took a bone. A bone can be a completely different thing for many dogs. So I'm gonna play it safe, and I wanna show you how I get that bone away from him without getting snapped at. Here you go, okay. Okay, come on. I like that he's kind of holding his stay there. All right, and that's that simple, look at that. Rather than trying to go in there and take a bone from your dog and risking getting snapped at, it's a good idea to manage that. So I'll give this to him another time. So we're actually having to preview our upcoming episode here on YouTube. So it's convenient that he's doing so well in his crate right now so far. I mean, this is another reason that you have to really make sure that they're in a controlled environment with a dog who is not house trained. There are times when you've got to do you things. It's an episode of Black Mirror to him. Like he's now been in this alien-like environment and he's got this video playing on what we do. You know, it's the whole inception thing. Every time we film us doing this, I can't even handle it. There is also a really good chance with him. Keep in mind that he's extra subdued right now. That's really normal. Some dogs will become extra subdued or extra hyper or whatever during their first few days in a new place. When you have a dog who's been placed in a brand new environment like this, what you see is not always what you get. So I'm going to take Chop directly outside from his crate. So he has an opportunity to relieve himself. I don't want to give him a chance to have an accident. Now, take that, I guess. You're a leg lifter, huh? I'm just looking for a lot of opportunities this first few days to connect with him and love him and feel his love. I mean, you know, he's going to be getting spoiled rotten while he's here, but we are also going to ask quite a bit of him. We're going to ask a lot of this dog in his time with me. And in exchange, I'm going to give him every bit of me that I can. Okay, there's his first number two. Really not looking forward to picking those up. Gosh, you're handsome. We're out here on the deck. You can see we're installing a proper yard here, but the grass hasn't grown. So we're not using that for this series. It's ugly, but just so you know why we're not using the main backyard yet. Pretty cloudy night here. I like to let inertia out here a lot to have some fresh air. So thought he might like that too. Okay, so we decided to make him an outdoor dog. No, I'm just kidding. He was enjoying himself so much out there. I mean, a lot of dogs love getting that fresh air. So I think he looks good in the background. Oh yeah, <laughs> he looks great here. He belongs in Alaska for sure. Definitely, I agree. He's so confident. He's gonna make a great dog for somebody. Mm -hmm. I have some concerns. Obviously, one of the bigger issues we saw was when he snapped <laughs> at inertia when she got near his bone. I'm very understanding of why, but I really wanna nip that in the bud. And and do some conditioning with him later on. Leash pulling is definitely a standout issue of his. He's a strong man. And of course, you know, other issues, his training, sit down, stay, come, all of that. So there's gonna be a lot to do. And then of course, we're hoping to find him a home. Some people are really drawn to a dog like Chop and other people might be intimidated. I mean, it's no secret that the puppies go first. I understand why people like puppies, but one of the great things about adopting an adult dog is that you get a better sense of their size, their capabilities, how quickly they reason with certain things. There's more advantages probably to an older dog. I agree. My mm -hmm. dog was one when I adopted her. I thought it was fabulous. We don't know how we're gonna get him adopted. This is always the stressful part about these things. I'm so curious about his DNA results. It's gonna <laughs> happen during the series. We're gonna let you know when we know. So I think we should keep guessing until we find out what he is, because I think it's gonna be crazy. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like a quarter coyote and like, a quarter wolf, honestly. Oh. When he jumped on our counter earlier today, I turned around and saw him and it looked like an actual Yeti had gotten into our house and was standing at our kitchen sink. Like he's enormous. Yeah. It's totally. blowing my mind. Agreed. I know I'm famous for going to bed really early, but we're in Alaska right now and the sun doesn't set until like almost midnight. So I swear it's 8 p.m. 
Yeah, it's 8 p.m. And that's when I go to bed, but that's because I like to get up early and do training. I'm gonna camp out up here in the bedroom. Chop's gonna be right there in the crate. I'm gonna have the door open. You and Inertia are gonna crash downstairs. We're gonna see you guys tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it'll be just me and Chop tonight. Allow me to set the scene for you. Here's Chop. Here's me. So I'm gonna be right here supervising them. On a side note, it is nine o'clock at night and check out how bright it is outside. There he is, he's sound asleep. It's about 10 o'clock now. He's been doing really well and it's still light outside. It's getting close to midnight now. You'll be happy to see that the sun is setting. There's the city of Anchorage. You can see the buildings were above them up here because we're on a mountainside. And this man is doing just fine. I think he just got up because I was checking on him, but so far he's doing a good job. How you doing, bud? He slept so good. He did really well. Good morning, you guys. I'm gonna go let him out in a minute, but long story short, he did great. The first thing I'm gonna do with him is take him immediately outside. Can we get by without a leash? He's here, the door is there, and I'm hoping he doesn't pee along the way. Okay, come on. I'll teach him how to stay later. Come on, buddy, let's go. Let's go. All right, look, looks like you know what's up. Let's let him get some fresh air. He's been in that crate quite a while, but he seems happy, well-adjusted. I don't know if he'll be that good forever. Part of me thinks since he's been sleeping outside so much that he probably really appreciated that bed last night. Hey, good morning, hello. It was so fun dog sitting you last night because I didn't have to do anything. The first 24 hours were smooth at times. They were bumpy at times. We'll have to see how all of this continues, but the first order of business is seeing if Inertia is ready to start playing with Chop again. Not to mention I've got to get this dog trained in just a few weeks and find him a home. Check out Playology and Pupford products in the description. Subscribe and click the bell. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok too. This is going to be a very different series than anything we've ever done. We'll see you in episode two.